Snow ghosts? Yeah. Uh, those that uh, work and can afford them. Others may have snow ghosts that they don't run. So when you start to skin them, you always start with the foot? Yep. Uh, I like to get, there is a pad in there, but the fur is so dense, you, it's very hard to get to. Yeah. And you don't, I don't want to destroy the pad, so what I want to do here is... So you open up a, a slice right down the, the yep. leg? Yeah, and then I'm going to go right on across, but okay. not right this minute. I'm going to open his leg up and get that his and dejoin them so that I can hang them up with a gimbal and proceed. Uh, I'm doing this one in the standard way today because I want to make sure with this one I get all the lips. Excuse me. And uh, this is the most sure way I know to do that. To get the lips. Yep. When we go down, get to the head. I want to get all the inner lips, everything. Yeah. Uh, I want all the eyelashes, everything on the skin. The only thing I tell people I don't include with the skin is their memory. <laughs> Something a lot of people may be unaware of is northern animals. Let's go with a fox because they're throughout the temperate zone, whereas these guys are, are not. They're mm -hmm. subarctic and arctic. Uh, fox in the lower 48 are going to have thicker skins and lighter pelts. Okay. The reason why these are so valuable in Alaska, particularly Kodiak Island, they're huge, is because the skin is thin, but the fur is dense, and they, they don't rely on fat, see. Even sea otters, they don't they don't rely on fat. They I didn't rely know on their fur. And that's why their fur is so valuable and so dense. And you would think a sea otter, in addition to yes. being dense, has to trap air. Yep. Because they're submerging. And it does. But they're able to... They're not a seal, but they're able to uh, augment that. And when you see their flippers, <laughs> wow. Really? they got some big feet. Yeah. Yeah, they're a piece of work. Have Gorgeous. you ever trapped a river otter up here? No, no. There's uh, actually very few. Same as mink, no mink at all. Hmm. Um, there was a there. Every once in a while, an otter will go through. Um, if I do get one, uh, it won't be for sale. Yeah, want, that's a rarity, huh? Yeah, I want the fur myself to make stuff out of. It's it's you know, otter, wolverine, and seal being my view, the hardiest of the furs. This is where you get a lot more control in skinning. I used to do this solely by pulling. It's just really the normal way to do it. But with arthritis and all that kind of stuff going on, in order to stay in the game, I made some adaptations. So this is like Viagra for skinning. 
Something like that, yeah. Without the pill. Mm -hmm. oh, look at that. Look at it go. It does a neat job. And uh, it lets you put all your focus on getting the skin off in one piece minus damages or very few but it does require still some patience and attention to detail you can always take it off tear it out there To it. And they know, they can feel that and they know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So. These guys are strong. Morning, yeah. Hey, so how many miles is Iditarod? Iditarod is exactly 980. Oof. They call it a thousand because that sounds better, you know? Yeah. Uh, the but, trails like this, nice and smooth? Uh, no, because uh, on Iditarod you have the trail breakers 24 hours ahead of number one. Okay. Now in Alaska, as you might. I can imagine 24 hours can make a big difference in weather. Yeah. So you can have the trail breakers go through 24 hours later. You, but, um, uh, uh, when you come through, you can have a nice trail turn into a complete mess. Oh, wow. You know, Just you can totally. Have the wind go through a blizzard and the trail looks like nobody has ever been through, you know. And if you're eighth, you're still far enough in, in the front. There's not that many people in front of you breaking trail. Exactly, but but you're far enough back so that you're you're far from the clear. Exactly. Oh. And uh, running, you know, running in, in the first few positions has its has its ups and downs. But what a really good advantage is is see the dog pooping. Yeah, right there. he can poop while he runs. Yep. That's, that's talent. Funny. So that's these dogs have to poop while they're running because if I have 60 dogs, I can't stop every time. You sure. Know? But we still be racing. You know? I should teach my kids how to do that when we go on road trips. <laughs> yeah. I never had to um, really do that uh, on the regular day. <laughs> and so if you have, um, if you are like mush at number 30, you go through a lot of dog poop on the trail, you know, because we all use the same trail. Yeah. So it can be a pretty big disadvantage. Because um, when the dogs get into a checkpoint, they lick their feet. Oh. And so if they have, uh, uh, you know, if they have like diarrhea or some other poop from other dog teams there that are sick, yeah. they can get sick really quickly too. But if you're number one, the dogs don't have a scent trail to follow. That's, yeah. You know, so it's, uh, it's it can be a blessing or it can be your worst enemy. Uh huh. Good job, guys. 